Hello everyone, welcome to Encryption, the tech tips and tutorial channel. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to add a Windows Server 2019 into a domain and configure Windows Server 2019 for the file share server. The lab scenario will be like this. I have a Windows Server with the host name antiheroes-dc01 with the IP address 10.10.10.17 24 that is acting as a domain controller. So the Active Directory domain services and DNS roles are installed and configured on this server. And I have a domain as networkheroes.local. Another host uh, also I have for this lab is Windows Server 2019 as the host name as antiheroes-fs01 with the IP address 10.10.10.20 24 and it will act as a file sharing server in the domain networkheroes.local. This machine is fresh machine, nothing is installed and nothing is configured on this server. So I will configure file sharing in this Windows Server 2019 from the scratch and verify the shared file access from the Windows 10 host, which has the host name as antiheroes-win10-c1 with the IP address 10.10.10.18/24, the role of this machine is uh, for now uh, is to access files shared by the file server. The Windows 10 machine also will be a member of the domain networkheroes.local. We need to add this machine to the domain because the domain users only going to get access to the file shared by the file server. Okay, now let's move on to the configuration. Here I have two Windows Server 2019 and a Windows 10 installed as a virtual machine in VMware Workstation. This is the domain controller in the domain networkheroes.local. The IP address of this domain controller is 10.10.10.17. This is also a Windows Server 2019 which I'm going to configure as a file share server. Nothing is installed on this server, so I will show you configuring everything from scratch. If you click on local server, you get information about the server and the server properties, including its name, security status, network configurations, and so on. As you can see, the computer name is uh, win dash blah blah blah. And the server is not a member of any domain 8. So it's showing the work group. Currently, this server is getting IP configurations from the DSCP server in the network, but we should always assign static IP configurations to the server. You can just click on this link of Ethernet 0 to assign IP configurations to the network adapter of this server. But before that, I want to verify what IP configurations Currently, it's getting from the DHCP server. So, I open the command prompt and run ipconfig. The current IP address is 10.10.10.20 and the default gateway is 10.10.10.2. I will make exactly the same IP configuration static to the network interface of this server so that the IP configurations are not changed automatically even in the next boots. On the IP address box, Type the IP address as 10.10.10.20. Submit mask for slash 24 is 255.255.255.0. The default gateway is 10.10.10.2. Type the preferred DNS server address as the IP address of the local DNS server or the IP address of the domain controller, which is 10.10.10.17. And I type the alternate DNS server address as 10.10.10.2. This is the gateway address to connect to the internet that is also acting as the DNS server to resolve the internet addresses. Then click on OK. Again, click on OK. Now I'm going to change the computer name. Uh, so uh, click on the computer name, click on change, and I type the computer name as antiheroes-fs01 also i'm going to join this server to the domain so click on the domain i type the domain name as 
networkheroes.local and then click on OK. Here we need to type the domain administrator credentials on the username type as administrator. Give the administrator password and click on OK. As you can see, welcome to the networkheroes.local domain. This means the server is now part of the domain. Now we will need to restart the server to take everything changes into effect. So click on the restart now button. Wait for the server to restart. Right click on the virtual machine and click on send control or delete. Click on other user. Type the username as administrator. Again, this is domain administrator and type the administrator's password and then hit enter. To verify from which user you are logged on, open run, type cmd to open command prompt, type who am I command and hit enter. Here antiheroes-fs01 is the computer name on which you are logged on and the administrator is the username. Okay, the server manager is loaded on the server. Clicking on the local server, you can see some of the properties of the server and their status. Here, make sure that IE enhanced security configuration is turned off. If in your server it's on, then click on it and turn it off for administrator. Now I go back to the domain controller and create a user. Click on tools. Click on active directory users and computers. Right click on users. Click on new and click on user. I type the first name as fs admin. Leave the full name as the same and user login name as fs admin. All in the lower case. Then click on next. Create password. Retype the password to confirm. I uncheck the user must change password on the next login. Then click on user cannot change password and password never expires. Now if you click on the computers, you can see the file server computer name. I'm gonna move this computer to servers group. Servers is just a group or an organization unit that I created in the previous lab. You will certainly not have this if you haven't created it. It doesn't matter even if you leave it in the default location. Clicking on the servers, we can see the two servers, FTP server which I created in the previous video and the file server which we are going to configure now. Now I go to the file server. Here I am going to log in as the user that we just created and that is FS admin. So right click on the virtual machine and click on send control or delete. Click on switch user, again right click on the virtual machine and click on send control or delete. Click on other user, type the username as fs admin, type its password and hit enter. Okay, now I am logged on as the user fs admin. This is just a normal user account. I am going to add this user in the administrators group so that I can configure the server as a file server without any issue. So I right click on the windows icon and click on computer management. Here click on local users and groups, click on administrators, right click and click on properties. Click on add, I just type fs and click on check names. The user is found. Click on OK. Click on Apply. I got the error that reads Access Denied. This is obvious because uh, currently I am logged in as the user FS Admin, which is just a normal user till now. And it doesn't have administrative privilege, uh, so it cannot do any administrative tasks such as adding a user to administrator group or removing a user or something like that administrative task. Here what we can do is uh, we can open the PowerShell as an administrator and then open the computer management. So I search for PowerShell, right click on it, 
and click on run as administrator it's asking for the administrator credentials just type the username as administrator and type the domain administrator's password on the powershell type comp mgmt and hit enter now the computer management is open as an administrator click on the local users and groups click on groups double click on administrators click on add i just type fs and click on check names the user is found click on ok click on apply and click on ok now the user is added to the administrators group without any issue and the user account fs admin is now administrator user now i'm going to sign out and uh, sign in again as fs admin user so that the administrative privilege will be active for the user type the password and hit enter the font and everything is appearing quite uh, smaller so i'm going to adjust the display settings so that we will have a better look and feel on the desktop i right click and click on display settings here under the scale and layout settings I set the size of text, apps and other items to 125% and then close the window. Then I search for server manager. Click on it. I click on local server. Now before installing the file server role and configuring it, I am going to add a hard disk to the server. Because I don't want to use the hard disk which is being used to store operating system files and boot files instead i want to add a separate hard disk and use the entire disk for storing shared files and directories so right click on the virtual machine tab click on settings click on add click on next click on sata click on next here i select create a new virtual disk and click on next here leaving the disk size as default allocated i click on store virtual disk as a single file then click on next and then click on finish now click on ok now i'm going to add the file server role and configure it so i click on manage and click on add roles and features here if I click on file and storage services, I don't see anything like share or so. But after the installation, we'll get that. Click on next, click on next again, click on next and here expand the file and storage service. Expand the file and ISCSI services, then click on file server checkbox. Then click on next. Again click on next and click on install. Wait until the installation is complete. Here we can see the shares. The installation is now complete. Now click on shares. Here we can see uh, to create a file share start the new share wizard. But before starting the wizard, I am going to convert the new hard disk to online. Currently, uh, when I just uh, added the hard disk, that's offline. So we need to convert it to online. We can see the disk is now online. I close this window. Now I click on it to start the new share wizard. Here the SMB share quick profile is suitable for us for general file sharing. Uh, so selecting it, I click on next. Here I don't see the new hard disk volume. It's probably because I just converted the disk to online, but I didn't format it to any file system. To use a disk, uh, we should always format it to a file system. Uh, so I click on cancel on this wizard. Again, open the disk management utility. I right click on the disk space, click on new simple volume, click on next. Click on some next, 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 and then click on finish. The disk is being formatted and it's ready now. Now go to server manager's share 
click on refresh so that the changes are identified then click on uh, to start the new share wizard select smb share and click on next here we can see the new drive drive e is listed just click on it and click on next i give the share name as shared and as you can see the remote path to share is double backslash anti heroes dash fs01 slash shared this means to access the share we should type the url as in this form on the client machines we will access the share click on next here make sure that enable access based enumeration is checked and allow caching of share is already checked then click on next by default these permissions are allowed you can customize these permissions however by clicking on this button for now i just click on next to leave the default permissions click on create the share is successfully created and the smb permissions are set now uh, minimizing the server manager i open the file explorer click on this pc and double click on e drive double click on shares and here you can see the shared directory i right click on the folder click on properties click on sharing and clicking on advanced sharing and clicking on permissions from here as well we can add or remove permissions for different users and groups i just click on okay without doing anything here i go to security tab i click on edit and here i'm going to add two users with different permissions on the folder i just type the user and then click on check names here we can see a list of users starting with the keyword user these users i am getting from the domain controller i created these users while configuring ftp servers you may not see the list of the users if you don't have them in your domain controller i select the user one i allow read and write permissions to this user this means uh, the user will be able to read and write in the folder but will not be able to execute anything click on apply again i click on add for another user search for user select user 2 and for this user i just allow modify permissions modify permission mean uh, the user can do anything this is like full permission then click on apply and click on okay now close this properties window now i double click on the folder and here for the verification purpose i create a folder for user 1 and another folder for user 2 then i open notepad and write a line i save this file on user 1 folder in the name user 1 Now I change the user1 to user2 and save it on the user2 folder as user2. Close this, double click on user1, we can see the file and double clicking on the user2, we can see the file. Okay, everything is good. Now let's go to Windows 10 machine and access the share. This is Windows 10 machine. I have already joined this machine to the domain networkheroes.local. If you haven't joined this machine on the domain, then you need to join this uh, Windows 10 machine to the domain controller. I'm pretty sure you know how to join a machine to a domain controller because we have already seen the same way in the FS01 server. I log in to this machine as user, which is user1. To verify who I am logged in as, I open command prompt and type who am I. Here we can see the user1. Now to access the share, open run. Type the path as double backslash antiheroes-fs01 
and hit enter. We get the shared folder from the file share server. Double clicking on it, we can see the two folders that we created on the server inside the shared folder. Double clicking on user1, we can see the file and double clicking on the file, we can see its text. Closing the file, I press delete key to delete it. As you can see, you need permission to perform this action. This is because the file was created by FS admin user in the server and by default that user only has the permission to delete it. But the user one does not have permission to delete or modify on this file. The user however is just right to read and write in the file. I am currently logged in as user1 in the server and this user has only read and write permission. I can read and write on the file but can't delete it. The permission is applied as how you configure from the server. Then users can access and work with the files or folders as per the allowed permissions. Ok friends, this is how we can configure Windows Server 2019 as a file server. That's all for now. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next. Until then, have a nice time. Goodbye.